the heart is pretty simple. It's like a house. There's a bottom floor, two of them. There's a top floor, two of them. The top left floor is where the problem of atrial fibrillation begins. The heart is receiving blood from the lungs that have oxygen in it. And through those, what we call pulmonary veins, that blood's deposited in the top chamber of the heart. It goes down to the bottom chamber of the heart and is pumped to the rest of the body. Those pulmonary veins harbor the muscle tissue that fires. When I say fire, it triggers an electrical jolt into the heart. And if you have many of these repetitively, you could put the heart into atrial fibrillation. It's not contracting or relaxing like it should. When that happens, patients have all these symptoms and they feel very poorly. The conditions that increase the risk of atrial fibrillation, the number one and number two are probably hypertension, which is very prevalent in our population, and sleep apnea. It's very important for patients to see a cardiologist early, and then usually that leads to a referral to electrophysiology if someone has atrial fibrillation. The longer atrial fibrillation occurs, the more likely it is to continue to occur, and the harder it is to treat. For patients thinking about what to do for their atrial fibrillation, one of them could be having your heart not go too fast. And that's what we call a rate-controlling approach. Let's leave them in atrial fibrillation. But let's give them a medicine that says, whoa, 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 slow down, don't go too fast. So stay under 100 beats per minute. A rhythm-controlling approach says, no, 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 we don't want you to ever go in atrial fibrillation, or we want to minimize it. Let's keep you in sinus rhythm. That's a different type of drug. That doesn't just slow the rates. That keeps you in normal rhythm, what we call normal sinus rhythm. Two ways to do that, one of them with drugs, and the other one of them is what we call a catheter ablation procedure. And that procedure is us going up through the groins in your veins, up into the heart, and burning abnormal tissue that's creating this atrial fibrillation. So the reason to choose that is if you wanted to take care of the atrial fibrillation with the most efficacious means that we have. For patients, we'll have a detailed discussion with shared decision-making about the things that they really want and what their preferences are. And are they more interested in, in taking pills? Would they approve of that in their lifestyle more than they would like to undergo a procedure? A physician might say you'd be a better candidate for a catheter-based procedure because of the fact that you're on X, Y, or Z medication. And X, Y, or Z medication will interfere with some of the heart rhythm medications. But there can also be physiologic reasons, such as really low blood pressure. And if you have really low blood pressure, most of our rhythm medications can decrease the blood pressure some, and that could be a side effect that we could predict up front might not be tolerated. So we have that experience of seeing what's out there that's usual and what's also out there that's unusual. But we've seen it before, and the collective wisdom of our group comes together with that synergy that we could deliver every patient that walks through that door their very best chance at staying out of atrial fibrillation. We make the effort to go beyond the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation to really understand what's underlying that and then to address those problems before we jump ahead to the therapy. We know that we have this ability to help you feel so much better. Even though it's a procedure and we understand it can be scary, our goal is to make you not scared. Our goal is to make you feel really good with an excellent quality of life for the rest of your life.